So, Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. I'm a guy watching a lady show. Let's do this. Okay, okay, no, I, I see why people like this. That was actually really good! I, I'm liking this show! Oh man, that season finale was great! I can't wait to see what happens next! That was okay, I guess. I stopped watching like a season and a half ago. Well, critical integrity be darned. Let's do this. God lives in London? My mother lives in London. Your mother is God? Lorelei. So, God is a woman. Lorelei. And a relative. That's so cool. I'm gonna totally ask for favors. Make her stop. Oh, that I could. You spoke with your mother? Yes, I did. She's fine. She sends her love. And she's coming to visit. Gilmore Girls is a show well-beloved by a lot of women my age. And also by my college roommate, Jason, who would have the show playing while he was grinding in World of Warcraft. Anyway, it follows the exploits of Lorelai Gilmore, a single mother raising her daughter, Rory. Uh, it follows all of their romantic entanglements and the way that they try to interact with each other and with the world at large. Um, they have a lot of heartache and a lot of heartwarming moments, and they hold together through good and through ill. Cue the whimsical lalas! In my mind, the title Gilmore Girls refers not only to the two beautiful women who grace the DVD covers, but also to their mother, Emily. The clan matriarch plays an important role in the Gilmore Girl dynamic. You see, Lorelai Gilmore runs away from home at 16 years old, and by so doing, completely destroys the future that her parents had planned for her. It is a very, very deep insult that leaves scars on all of the people involved. It's drama, and not easily gotten over. That sort of intergenerational conflict gives Gilmore Girls its greatest depth beyond any of the silly romantic quibbles. Additionally, Gilmore Girls is a character-based comedy, and therefore it rises or falls based on the strength of the population. Luckily, there are scores of quirky personalities for people to get attached to. The residents of Lorelei's home in Stars Hollow are the most neurotic bunch of small-town weirdos one could ever hope to be surrounded by. Ranging from the sweet Suki St. James and Jackson, her adorable produce man, to Taylor Dosey, the <coughs> enthusiastic town headsman, one of the most lovably punchable characters in television history. Of course, there is that romantic aspect of the show, and it is a pretty good one. Both Lorelai and Rory have their own fair share of romantic entanglements, and Rory's in particular feel very true. Something like a hyper-real, super-exaggerated form of the relationships that I had when I was in high school. Everybody who watches the show will walk away with their own favorite bow picked out for Rory Gilmore. And you probably will too. But if you pick anyone other than Jesse, you are the wrongest wrongling who ever wronged your way out of Wrongsville, Wrongsylvania. Rory, our Rory, Stars Hollow's Rory, got into Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. Wow, 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 I can't believe it. I, I feel like I... Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm not good at hugging. Oh, I thought it worked. <laughs> Thanks. Man, this is big, right? Do you guys ever talk to your TV? 
I do. I do it all the time. I'm always yelling advice at the characters at the screen. I usually yell things like, No, wait, don't go in there! Or, Can't you see its destiny? Or, Do a barrel roll! You know, that last one comes up more often than you'd think. Anyway, I found myself shouting at the television screen a lot while watching Gilmore Girls. And the one thing that I said more than anything else... FREAKING TALK TO EACH OTHER! Gilmore Girls milks a lot of drama out of certain characters' reluctance to open up about how they really feel. At the beginning of the series, when Rory is just entering her taciturn teenage years, this reticence feels like genuine source of drama. However, after three or four seasons of people just climbing up because the plot demands it, you kind of start to think they all deserve to be miserable. You remember all of those quirky, delightful characters I was talking about a couple paragraphs ago? Well, as the show goes on, all of their nuances get completely ironed out in favor of this one-dimensional approach that allows for broader comedy, but it completely destroys any interest that you have in these characters. And then, with the departure of showrunner Amy Sherman Palladino later on, you start to lose interest in all of the characters. It becomes increasingly difficult to care about the people that are involved. So much so, that I never even watched the final season. Which means that Gilmore Girls has more in common with Lost than you would expect. Hey! This is not gonna happen. You're not going back out to your moonscape, you're not going back to work, and you're not going home. Now we all agreed to have Friday night dinner, and we're here, and I smell dinner. And yes, apparently there are some issues to be worked out, but no one, I mean no one, is leaving here until we do! Gilmore Girls starts strong, but the concluding years leave much to be desired. I give the series an arbitrary number rating of 65 rapid-fire pop culture references out of 100. However, you can bump that number up to 85 if you jump off the wagon after Season 3. By the end of the third season, most of the characters find themselves in a pretty good place. There are a few dangling plot threads, but I like to think of that as leaving the audience wanting more. Season 4 still has some good charming moments in it, but it ends on such a horrifyingly mixed emotional moment that you'll feel compelled to keep on going, and that way lies madness. So you see, I hope that I can demonstrate by this review that just because a show features primarily female leads doesn't mean that it's not for guys as well. Look, I may not have that much in common with a 30-something single mother or her teenage daughter, but I still found myself enjoying watching their trials and their tribulations and their banter. It was a good time, and it wasn't just two women arguing about whose boobs were bigger. Crazy! That, do you want to measure? What? I'm serious. Why don't you go get the measuring tape right now? I am not going to measure my boobs. Because you know that you are totally bigger. I'm going inside. Fine, don't measure. We'll just compare bras. Stop it. We're reviews. Bye.